I, I definitely had that moment where I was trying to uh, convince myself to start speaking up and start making videos. And when I decided to do it, that's when I saw, you know, I, I quadrupled the amount of followers I had on Twitch. I had that on YouTube now. People are desperate for rational thinking. Yeah. yeah. And uh, they're, they're going to be willing to support people that are on, that take that position. When Welcome to the Father State. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you so much for being with me. The Father State podcast is on subscribe star. Click the link in the video description to support our work, support the show and all that good stuff. I appreciate it. I have with me YouTuber and Twitch streamer got this. That is I. Thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. This is amazing. Amazing. <laughs> so, what is a gothics? That's just my username. Uh, I picked it when I was a teenager, and I just kept it until I, you know, now that I'm an adult, just kept it. And so it has no meaning to it? Um, I was gothic in high school. Really? I just, like, yeah. I mean, I kind of have a, you know, a little, a little something, something here, but I used to dress really dark in high school, so I guess that's where I came from. And so what ha why were you doing that in high school? Uh, because I wanted to fit in, and I had no friends, <laughs> if I'm being honest. <laughs> and were you able to fit in with the other Gothics people? Oh, yeah. Really? Uh, I actually, I got into, like, the, the heavy metal scene, and, and I love rock music still. Uh, but I also, when I started dressing Gothic, I became a Wiccan in high school for a little bit. And what is a Wiccan? A witch. Really? Yeah. Wow. And yeah. did you did you go to school on a broom or something? No, I, <laughs> I didn't get my broom license. I was too young. <laughs> and so what was going on in your life at the time that caused you to go down that road? Uh, I think it was just the, uh, I guess, the culture of, of going into high school. I used to be a straight-A student before then, but something about fitting in and, and finding your voice in high school, the cool kids and stuff like that, I think that's what initially drew me to that subculture. Really? And yeah. so um, you didn't fit in. What, what does it feel like not to fit in? What's that feeling? Back then, it felt terrible. If you ask me now, I think it's fine. <laughs> right. But back then, can you describe what the feeling was that made you think you didn't fit in? Um, I guess I just didn't like the same things other people didn't like. I didn't like the same music or the same, like, just hobbies, I guess. Um, and I just, I just, I don't know, I felt excluded if I can recall. Uh, and then, uh, so the people that you, once you dress like a, uh, you know, got the stuff, the people were having the same issues that you were having, and that's why they were able to accept one another? I mean, I don't know why they were gothic necessarily, but just objectively looking at them, they right. also weren't popular. They they didn't really fit in anywhere else. So I, I, I almost compare it to like, this is the group of rejects and <laughs> you, now you can have your own reject family. <laughs> and did you have a boyfriend during high school? Of course not. Oh, you did <laughs> well, not. Towards the, end, towards the end of high school, I did, but the first maybe like two Two years, I didn't. I actually dropped out. That's the other part of yeah, it. Yeah, I'm going to ask you about that. You dropped out of high school, and why? Um, I I think the pressure of fitting in. I also had some uh, home problems, and uh, I also, I, I guess in a way, I was like, I don't know what the point is of me uh, doing a lot of these classes because I didn't want to be a scientist, for example. Right. I would have preferred just to start going into the workforce and making money. Nice. Uh, so it was a combination of a bunch of things. I like that. What did your parents say when you dropped out of high school? Um, supposedly, my mom signed the papers for me. <laughs> 
I think. Uh, I, w- I was towards the end of high school. I was becoming very rebellious and I had my angsty teenage phase. Right. Um, so she ended up, she told me she signed the papers for me. She didn't put up a fight or anything. Uh, and really? that was that. Were yeah. you surprised? I was very surprised. <laughs> <laughs> and how old were you at the time? Um, maybe 17. Oh, okay. Yeah. And did your fa- what did your father say about you dropping out? Um, well, uh, my biological dad, uh, my, my parents got divorced when I was, uh, in high school. Oh. Um, yeah. Uh, so, and she didn't remarry until years later. So I, I guess I didn't really have an opinion on that <laughs> side. <laughs> Amazing. And so were you not close to your father growing up then? Uh, no, no, I wouldn't say so. What was that like for you not being close to him growing up? Um, Growing up, uh, I don't know. I think my brain just sort of got used to it. Um, yeah, because uh, he had his own problems that he was going through. Yeah. Uh, I think he has resolved it now, but uh, back then, I, I guess my brain just, just shut it off. Like, I have my mom, and I'm good with that. So are you close to him now? No. And why not? Uh, I guess that's, uh, that's on me. Right. I'll, I'll be honest. That, that's on me. Um, and I am working towards trying to uh, make amends, I guess. Oh, good. So when you ask him why wasn't he around, what did he tell you? Oh, he's not going to tell me anything. <laughs> did you ask him? No. <laughs> why but, not? I mean, but I know. <laughs> Do you want to be close to him? I don't I don't necessarily want to. I, I forgive him for a lot of the stuff he did, but I I'm comfortable now. Are you at peace within? Yeah, oh, I yeah. am. Yeah. So, so in in your bio, you have the problematic grifter. Mm. What is that? Um, that's just what the Internet has called me. So I've taken that name. And uh, because they say that my opinions are problematic and they call me a grifter because I have opinions oh, that they don't yeah. like. I understand it. Yeah. And so you're not bothered by that? No, I was before, not anymore. And um, so before you started on YouTube, you were a uh, uh, Twitch, Twitcher, right? Yes. And your bio said you dropped out of high school. We talked about that. And so how are things going for you today? In compared to back then, um, I wouldn't say it's I wouldn't say it's easier. I think it's uh, uh, a lot of things have been happening, especially as of late with like the world and such. Right. That it's it's getting more difficult. But I think my resilience has gotten stronger. So the way that I navigate around these problems is easier for me. So uh, do you still feel like it's necessary to be a gother? No. So you're not a gother anymore? I don't think so. No. Oh, okay. Good. You feel better within yourself as well? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Oh, good. So you like all dating and all that kind of stuff? No, I'm I'm engaged. Are you? Yeah. What the? <laughs> <laughs> How did that happen? I mean, I don't know. God just dropped him on my lap one day, and, and, and yeah, he uh, asked me a few months ago. And so, is he an alpha or beta? You know the answer to that. Come on. He's a beta, huh? No. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) He's an alpha. (laughs) Would you ever date a beta male? I have dated numerous beta males. (laughs) (laughs) And what was that like for you? Uh, I felt like I was their mom. Yeah, you were. Mm -hmm. And did you tell them that? Uh, No. Um, but I'm sure there was a wine glass going, <laughs> flying at them at some point. <laughs> and so are you into politics at all? You know what? Uh, not really. I have forced myself into the conversation of politics because I feel like it's necessary as of late. Right. Uh, but it's a topic that bores me. It's exhausting. Yeah, it is. And so right now, do you, are you like conservative, liberal, uh, independent, where do you stand? I am, uh, I'm registered independent. Uh, as far as any other label, I just say I'm politically homeless, but the internet will put labels on me anyway. So I don't, I don't correct them anymore. It is what it is. Like, I, I think that my ideas, uh, go alongside of what is the truth and what is 
the most reasonable outcome. Not, right. not you know, I don't pledge allegiance to one party or anything. Amazing. So you're engaged. When is the wedding date? Um, we don't really know. We're going to try to do something very simple because yeah. uh, nice. I learned that a lot of people spend thousands of dollars on weddings and I'm not with that. <laughs> That's right. So, yeah. I, and, and you're going to have a bunch of babies? Uh, we're Yes, we're going to repopulate. Uh, so there's more common sense uh, children <laughs> amongst the planet. Nice. Politics is in a mess right now. Um, when you become president, how will you solve or resolve the p political mess? Ooh, uh, the first thing that I would do is I would um, mandate the uh, Internet as a whole. And I would say, if you are under the age of 18, you're not allowed on the Internet. And that's the first thing. Go outside and, and go touch grass. Because uh, I think a lot of people are just consumed with stuff and it, they, they don't they lack the ability to think these days. Yeah. Uh, so that would be the, that would be the first thing I would do. Amazing. I have said that women should not be in politics because it's not in the nature of a woman to lead. Mm. Am I wrong? Hmm. You know what? I'm I'm leaning in your direction. Really? I'm really I'm, I'm leaning in your direction and and I'll tell you why. Uh I know that in politics you're going to have people that are emotional and that yeah. are are liars. Yeah. Uh from my experience just as a content creator, a lot of the vitriol that I get from people that are just very emotional yeah. are women. Are women. Yeah, and, you and, can say and, that again. <laughs> and if I'm trying to explain something and I provide research, you know, data. And I say, here's this topic, here's the research. And instead they just keep yelling. I have to assume like there is something there that is, you're, you're not able to actually think rationally. Yeah. You know, I hate, I hate to generalize, but this is just objectively what I've experienced. You're absolutely correct. And as a result of having these emotional people, women take over, everything is getting worse. It's not getting better. Because it's based on how they, what they think and how they feel and not what is right, what is the mm -hmm. best thing, what is the right thing. And it has nothing to do with feelings. Are you were a part of a—are a, um, you a part of the walkaway movement or something like that? Um, I, I am now. Um, <laughs> they asked me to join their rally, so next week I'm going to go to Beverly Hills and do my first rally. Really? And yeah. so what is the walkaway movement exactly? It is a movement to uh, encourage people to walk away from the Democratic Party or specifically the radical left, right. which is where I was on. Um, and that doesn't mean move away and become Republican. That just means get away from there and then use your brain to figure out what political person you want to vote for. Oh, so you grew. So am I, am I did you grow up as a Democrat? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, I think um, I think most black people in America are programmed to vote Democrat. Yeah. Yeah. Y you're right. It's horrible. They live yeah. on that plantation for life and it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Why did you decide to leave the Democratic Party? Um, it was over the course of like, I want to say three years, just uh, things kept happening. Uh, the first occurrence was, uh, you know, the Little Mermaid, uh, Disney's live action movie. They were going to make Ariel black. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I really didn't like the fact that, first of all, I hate when they change characters like that. But I also didn't like the dialogue. If you have a problem with Ariel being black, then you're racist. And that to me, that's not logical. Right. <laughs> that's just Absolutely. an assumption. So I, I vocalized my opinion on Twitter and I got slandered. And this was when I was still on Twitch. Um, and a lot of people just called me anti-black. And I'm like, where is this coming from? Like, I don't. And it was all black people coming at me. Yeah. Um, and then a few months later, the George Floyd incident happened. And then I saw, again, lots of black people condoning rioting and looting and I'm like, what is going on? And then I said, oh, OK, the common thing here is that they're all on the left. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and then I started researching more. I saw the Uncle Tom documentary. Oh, nice. And yeah, yeah. Yep. And uh, yeah. And then I said, OK, I've been lied to. I'm leaving. 
That's amazing. Yeah. Nice. And um, so are both your parents black? No, my mom is Cape Verdean and my dad is Puerto Rican. Really? Mm -hmm. So what is Cape Verdean? Um, it's it's black. It's a little island off the coast of Africa. Oh, I see. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, amazing. you got when you um as you know, when you decide as a black person to be independent, that's when they really go after you. For oh, some yeah. reason, black Democrats, liberals, whatever you want to call them, they hate independent blacks as much as they hate white people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've well, oh yeah, I figured that out. What a mess, huh? Yeah, that's a mess. And so how did you deal with it when the attack first started? How did you handle that? Oh, I was I was a wreck. I was depressed. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was it was absolutely terrible. I cried. I would I stopped making content. I would just uh, you know smoke weed all day. Just <laughs> like just depressed. Um, yeah. Why did you, <laughs> Why did you take it so seriously? I don't know. I think it's I think it was because when I first started making content, I was doing it full time and I had so much love and support from people that enjoyed my work. Right. And occasionally I would get a troll every now and then that would say something mean. But this was like hundreds of people coming at me nonstop. And I just was not used to it. Yeah. Yeah. How, so how did you recover from it? Um, I recovered from it. Well, my, my worldview now is I believe God helped me recover from it. Yeah. Um, cause yeah. I recently became a Christian nice. and, uh, through the process of me dealing with that, uh, eventually people that were believers came into my life and they started those conversations and, uh, eventually that led me to go to church. And it was just this long process of just people just coming into my life that I needed to speak to. Uh, that got me to where I am now. Amazing. And so when you were attacked, were, were there people that you thought were your friends that you were close to, family members and others, did they turn on you as well? Um, not family members, but definitely friends, people I've had over the house for dinner, you know, uh, just people that, especially then when I voted for Trump, <laughs> oh man, <laughs> uh, that forget it. That, that was a lot more. I think maybe 90% of the friends that I had uh, stop being my friend, and then also uh, went online to disown me publicly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's amazing that when they turn on you like that, they go and try to publicly disown you, call you names, and all kind of mess. And yeah. it, it, it's crazy that so-called friends would do that to you. It doesn't mm. make, even if they didn't want to be your friend, they shouldn't try to go and try to hurt you. You know what I'm saying? Right. We just sort of agree. We don't want to be friends. I don't want to be friends anymore, but that's it. That should be enough, but it's not. Right. That's how That's how I am familiar with friendships. Yeah. Uh, so that's why too. I was very shocked. Like, how did, how did this happen? I don't remember having friends like this. <laughs> I know what you mean. So do you still smoke pot? Um... No, uh, I say I, I hesitated there because every now and then a friend will come over and he'll offer me an edible and we'll watch TV. But uh, I don't smoke be like just to make it very clear. Right. I was the whole day I would be high. So I would smoke a joint. And, and then when I came down from the high, I'll do another joint. And I was doing that because uh, of my anxiety and depression. Yes. And, and now I have another way to deal with that now through God instead of me self-medicating. Nice. That's amazing. Yeah, amazing. You are. <laughs> um, so I want to ask you about racism and white supremacy and all that. Do you believe that racism exists? No. <laughs> <laughs> and why not? Uh, okay, so I have to just make a distinction here. A ra when people say racism, I think they're describing something that is like, this person doesn't like me, or this person thinks my hair is weird, or this person is stereotyping me. Uh, I think what they're trying to do is embellish something to make it sound worse than it is. Like, for example, yeah. if if I said, oh, you're black and you're not allowed to shop here because you're black, that's different. <laughs> so I think that uh, 
the first example that I gave is what people look at when they say racism. And that to me, it's just any form of just dislike. So if someone doesn't like you because you're black, someone's not going to like you because you have bad eyebrows or you're ugly. <laughs> like it's, right. it's just a variation. And I think it, I think that embellishment uh, gets people to focus on that instead of learning to pick and choose their battles. Like, I don't care if people don't like me anymore. Right on. And what's your impression? How about uh, white supremacists or white supremacy? You believe that that is this? I'm still waiting for I'm still waiting for someone to tell me how many white supremacists they've encountered in their day to day. If there are some, who cares? It has right. nothing to do with me. Yeah. I'm. It doesn't affect my life. That's amazing. I totally agree. And, and, and it's just crazy to even focus on anything like that. Something like that. You, it's like a waste of time to yeah. put your attention on that kind of stuff. Yeah. I think with the black community, I say this loosely because I'm not a part of that commuted community. Yeah. Um, but I think that when the focus is on white supremacy, it redirects criticism. And instead of someone wondering, hmm, what about my behavior or choices has resulted in blank? They redirect the criticism to say, oh, it's white supremacy yeah. or it's this thing and that thing and, and yeah. not anything pertaining to what they did. Uh, yeah, I noticed that you were reacting to a video call. What, what exactly are white people superior at? That mm. was amazing. Yeah, yeah. How did that go for you? It went good for me, but it scared the crap out of me because I said, is this really what a lot of black people think? <laughs> like the, and that's that's very concerning. Yeah. Because uh, here's the other subtle thing about white supremacy is when you say that, you're also saying that a white person is higher than me. They have more an advantage than me. I rest my case. <laughs> I've been saying that for a long time now that black people who think that white supremacy or white, whatever they call it, is this. They're really saying that white people are smarter than them, that white people are superior to them. And because I know white people are not thinking that in themselves, so it's the blacks who are thinking that about white people. So that's the way the blacks see themselves. But And not all, not all, not all, but most. And because they won't look at it, won't get to know themselves, they don't realize that they think that about white people. It's not white people thinking that about them. Right, right. That's why it's so important to get to know yourself so you can see what's going on. Right. So your fiancé, you're so conservative now and solid in your thinking. How is he that way, too? Can he handle that? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah definitely. We've, uh, we've grown a lot together. Uh, he met me when I was at a customer service job right. at, that I hated. <laughs> and... <laughs> and uh, we have, you know, we've just grown together. We had our political awakening together. We both found God together. So I think that uh, we're just, we're made for each other. Oh, good. And yeah. so I'm glad you dropped out of high school. Do you have any regrets about that at this point in life? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> so you see it was the right thing to do for you? Yeah. And also looking at how the education system is, I, sometimes I wonder, did I dodge a bullet the, the way that a lot of kids are being propagandized? Absolutely. You really, really did. Yeah. God was with you and you didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I want to ask you about this so-called well, the, uh, cancel culture and wokeness, free speech and all this mess going on. Uh, you got in trouble, and you mentioned this earlier about The Little Mermaid. Uh, mm -hmm. You got in trouble online when you tweeted about a black woman being cast to play the lead in The Little Mermaid. What did you say, and what was how did how did they react to that on Twitter and everything? Yeah, so it was instantly they just labeled me as anti-black and that I hate black women. Oh, I just don't <laughs> want to see black women succeed. Uh, and I tried I tried explaining this on social media, which I can never have a conversation on social media. It's right. not going to happen. Yeah. Uh, but I tried explaining. Well, we can look at it from the artistic standpoint. It lacks creativity because you're taking something from the white man and you're turning it brown. Yeah. <laughs> That's the first thing. Like, ma make your own movie. Um, 
And then also, it also lacks critical thought to just say, oh, I'm anti-black. Well, it could be because growing up, I actually liked The Little Mermaid. It was one of my favorite Disney movies before they went woke. <laughs> and I didn't want to see a black Ariel because I want my white redheaded Ariel. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. And so did they cancel you on for that or how did it? Did... Oh, yeah. So what happened was is that I had a lot of um, people stop supporting me, uh, both unfollowing me and financially they stopped supporting me. Yeah. Um, and I had a lot of people send me hate mail. They were photoshopping photos of me. Uh, they were just they were just antagonizing me over the course of like a few weeks. And uh, that's initially what led me to take a hiatus from content creation, because every time I would go online, I would uh, get harassed in the chat by people saying, hey, you shouldn't follow Gothics anymore because she's anti-black and you shouldn't support her. Amazing. Yeah. And th was that hard for you to deal with? Oh, yeah. Uh. Oh, yeah. Amazing. And so you're now better and you decide to come back. How do you handle criticism and things like that now? Um, well, now it, it depends. If if people are coming at me, like let's say if someone has a disagreement with my video and they're and they're very cordial in the comment section, sometimes I'll respond to them. Uh, but if it's someone that is just coming out of left field and calling me anti black or some stupid label. I'm not going to respond to them because it's a waste of my time. Yeah, absolutely. I remember when, um, at one time, it felt like when people were attacking me, it felt like it was personal. Hmm. But then I got past that, and I realized that it's not personal. And so I stopped taking it personal and just mm -hmm. let it roll off my back. And, and so now when it happens, it's as though it's not even happening to me. They're just, those are just people or a person with their own issues and they're trying to make someone else feel misery because they're not happy. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, exactly you, you heard the saying misery love company. Oh yeah. They love, well, they love company. They need company. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if you don't get them company, they go nuts. They get even mm -hmm. worse. And then eventually they, they disappear because they don't have anyone to argue with. Yeah. I, I do think I definitely see that a lot of people, um, who are very vitriolic towards me, I notice that uh, I'm like their hobby. Yeah. I am their company. Yeah. Uh, because usually when I get a lot of people that try antagonizing me on social media, it's, the, it's always the same people. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, I, I kind of feel bad for them. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think about in school they're teaching critical race theory and all this crap to the children? LGBTQ, they're making the kids take off their body parts and, or not making them, but encouraging them, making boys think that they were girls and girls think. What do you think about all that mess? Uh, I think that parents need to homeschool their kids yeah. because their kids are being propagandized and the state is using, is weaponizing the uh, emotions of their children for political gain. I think it's amazing too that parents would still send their children to a school, public school, or even private, if the private are doing it, rather than saying, you know what, I'm not going to sacrifice my kids into hell like this. I'm going to make the sacrifice and keep my kids home and homeschool them or find a homeschool community or something. To put Why do parents sacrifice their children knowing that this is happening to them? I think, um, in my opinion, I think a lot of them just don't know. I think a lot of them, they look at, for example, the LGBT stuff. They think I am helping uh, my child be more inclusive. It's a good thing. They're not looking at the fact that a lot of young girls are starting to believe they're the opposite sex. Yeah. And that's leading to more suicides. And that's leading to them injecting puberty blockers into their body. So I don't think they're looking at the big picture. They just truly don't understand that this is political propaganda. Yeah. And kids have a lot to deal with today in that in their home, they're not happy because the parents are not getting along or the father's not around, the mother's unhappy. And then they have to go to school and deal with this. It's no wonder that suicide rate is going up. And then you have all kinds of drugs and things out there now video, you know, they're always online looking at crazy stuff. It's no wonder kids and more kids are killing themselves than they have done in the past because they just get no real help from anyone. Yeah. 
Uh, like even with me when I was in high school, even though I had my little phase, my mom was very strict with the Internet. Yeah. I was only allowed to have an hour of Internet a day only on certain websites I was allowed to access. I didn't have a cell phone. Uh, these kids, they're consuming so much content unrestricted. Yeah. So not only are they learning about this stuff in school, now they're learning about it any other time when they're not in school. What a sad way to live. Um, Elon Musk is purchasing the uh, uh, Twitter. Twitter, sorry about that. Uh, and he is promising or at least saying that free speech would be for all on Twitter now. How do you see all that? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll withhold an opinion until I actually see action. Right. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm from the perspective that I don't trust anyone, <laughs> really, that yeah. is in a big position like that. I can't. I've heard too many politicians and people in media say nice things, and then they end up being jerks. So I don't know. I totally understand that. I, I have a way-to-see attitude about it as well. I know a lot of people jumping up and down about it. They're all happy about it. But it's best to just wait and see because, like you, I just don't trust people anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and there's a rumor that the Great White Hope will be coming back. You know who the Great White Hope is, right? Is that is that Mr. Trump? That's right. Oh, boy. The Great White Hope. <laughs> with the media. They are among the most dishonest human beings on earth. Amazing. That's amazing. If he should run, will you vote for him again? Um, I have to see who are the other candidates. Because in my opinion, I think Trump has been tainted so much by the media yeah. that there are a lot of people that are still infatuated with the, the January 6th thing. And I think that he has so much bad PR attached to him. And do you think his, his uh, supporters... Um, do you think they feel that way or, or maybe the new people that he could possibly attract? Um, I just from my perspective as a content creator, I get a lot of comments from people that, uh, are from the perspective of they would rather, for example, DeSantis run yeah. or, you know, cause, cause they kind of, they feel the same way that, that he, he, uh, and then he also said some things about the vaccine that I guess people didn't like. <laughs> um, Yeah. I think he says something like he took it and he was encouraging others to take it. I, I believe I heard. But he wasn't he wasn't saying to them that you have to take it. He mm, was just yeah. encouraging it. It's up to you to do it. But he did it, I believe. Yeah, I think I think it was like I, re, I recall that. And then also he was like boasting about it was the best vaccine. We did it so quickly. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. so we did a lot of that. Like yeah. and. I guess people didn't like it. But, yeah, I uh, I have to see who the other people will run. Yeah, as for me, for right now, if Donald Trump ran 20 years from now, I still vote for him. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Nice. He is the great white hope. Yeah. I saw him um, speaking either in Ohio or Virginia supporting one of the guys that were running the Republican Party there. And it was just Donald Trump all the way. He hasn't changed at all. Hmm. Yeah, I like that honesty. I like that not being afraid of what people might think or what they and they are trying to turn the voters against him for sure. But he doesn't seem to be moved by that. And I respect that. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I used to have some severe Trump derangement syndrome. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, But I appreciate how how open he is and like what you see is what you get. And I can't say that about any other president. Granted, I just had my political awakening in 2020 before then I was just like, I voted for Obama just because he was black. (laughs) I I don't know anything about his policies. Um, but I appreciate how just direct Trump was and how he wasn't moved by, by people in the media or anyone. And that's the way we should live. Um, do you think he should go to Twitter? There's a rumor that he might be going, going back onto, uh, Twitter. Do you think he should? Yeah. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah. and, and why? I think he should because, um, there, the reason why a lot of Democrats are freaking out about Elon taking it is because they want full control over the, um, the what do you call it the the public square and it it twitter has essentially turned into like a giant watering hole 
for different types of ideas. And if only one type of idea is dominated on a platform that houses, what, billions of people? Yeah. Then, then, then I think that's, that's how you sway public opinion in terms of politics. So I think he should come back on the platform for that, but also to desensitize people from this idea that certain opinions shouldn't be allowed on the Internet. Right. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. That's amazing. Wokeness, can you define what that is and and is it a real meaning or do I don't what is what is wokeness? Stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. Um, it is uh, uh, wokeness. If I had to seriously define it, it is it, it is a, a, um, a bunch of ideas that cater to feelings, um, a lot of causes or movements that cater to feelings. So yeah. um, like critical race theory is one of that and, and teaching people about complicit bias and stuff like that. Who cares? Do you have a job? Go do that job. <laughs> that's how, <laughs> that's how right. I look at it. There was this uh, black woman that Joe Biden uh, recommended for the Supreme Court. Mm. Excuse me. And uh, no qualification was necessary, but only that it'd be a black female Democrat, I guess, female. Mm -hmm. And they asked that woman, what is a woman? And she didn't know. So I'd like to know your view on the fact that she was nominated and that she didn't even know what a, a woman was. What do you think about that whole deal? Yeah, I, I know exactly who you're talking about. Um, I think that that is ridiculous. I think I'm more disappointed in how easily people eat that up and they see black woman running for yeah. this uh, position. Let's get her in. She doesn't know what a woman is. She's not answering all these qu uh, questions. Uh, let's just have her in. I think that I'm disappointed in the public because that says something about your level of intellect if you just let anyone into office just because they look like you. Yeah, amazing. It's, and especially on the U.S. Supreme Court, that's a lifetime position. And right. you can just go nuts on there and you, you still have a job. And right. it, it, it's a mess. So how would you encourage people to speak up, those who are afraid to because they don't want to be censored, threatened, or call names or all that stuff you have to go through? What is, what are the, what is the first step to start speaking up? The first step is understanding that things are going to get worse before it gets better. And it's better to speak up now to build up momentum with other people that are pro free speech because I believe there's strength in numbers. And the only reason I think people got to the point where they felt comfortable to harass and slander people because of different opinions or whatever, I think it's because they hadn't been corrected for as long as they had. They were backed by politicians, people in the media, applauding cancel culture. And that was popular for a while, yeah. but not anymore. <laughs> So I, I think that's the first thing is just understanding that you got to speak up eventually because when there's no one left, to, if, I, if I get deplatformed and you get deplatformed, then they're going to be left. And at that point, it's too late. Yeah, exactly. And I noticed that most of the time and what people seem to be afraid of is when they do speak up, they have to stand alone because, mm -hmm. as you said, all your friends turn against you, you know, the, the people you thought you knew. And so... The, the person that's speaking up tend to be left alone, and most people cannot stand alone. They cannot stand on their own. Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't be a, a, afraid of that. I wouldn't be worried about that um, because I I definitely had that moment where I was trying to uh, convince myself to start speaking up and start making videos. And when I decided to do it, that's when I saw you know I, I quadrupled the amount of followers I had on Twitch. I had that on YouTube now. Um, and it's not about numbers, but the point being is that people are desperate for rational thinking. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they're they're going to be willing to support people that are on that take that position. So it might not come immediately, but also do your part to find a community where you can go to or on a platform or join a group or whatever where you can uh, be with like minded people. Because uh, I think it's really important right now, especially right now. I think it's very easy for you to feel like you're alone. Yeah. Um, and you're not. Amazing. What is a man? Um, ooh, <laughs> I like that question. What's a man? Mm. A protector. Uh, 
a leader, a provider, um, some, uh, I, w- I would start with that. Yeah. I think that's the bare minimum of what a man is. <laughs> and what is love? Love. I think love is truth. And, uh, and, uh, I don't know. I'm going to go with truth. Love is truth and kindness. And yeah. And yeah. so will you obey your husband? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Listen, you got- I, li- I already took the, uh, the marriage counseling at my church. I know the deal. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, so I got to heat this up and put you on the hot seat. Okay. All right. And I, I need you to answer these questions as quickly as possible. Okay. I'll try. The hot seat. Do you prefer alpha males or beta males? <laughs> alpha. <laughs> Do you support abortion? No. Did Big Mama Michelle or Mama eat up all the ribs? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Is it right to have sex out of wedlock? Uh, no. Do you trust the FBI? Hell no. <laughs> Should a Christian baker be forced to make gay wedding cakes? No. Is Joe Biden mentally fit to be president? No. Does did Camilla Harris love smoking weed? Yes, I think she said that. Yeah, she, she said it just makes you feel good. Kick, 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 kick. <laughs> <laughs> Should China pay reparation for the world to the world for the Chinese virus? Oh, uh, mm, yes. <laughs> it's the only form of reparations I like. Uh, I do too. Yeah. Would you ever do, uh, what's that word? Would you ever do awasa? What is that? Oh, you don't know what it is? Awasa? Yeah. Ayahuasca. Ayahuasca. A Y A H U A S C A. You're speaking like Joe Biden. You're going to have to define this for me. <laughs> oh, good, because I didn't know what it meant either. <laughs> what is it, Kelly? It's South South American plant medicine ceremony. Oh. So, so what it does, you, you, you take it, it gets you a little high, you trip out, and then you think you know God. Okay. okay. Well, I think if you want to know God, there's other ways to do it. <laughs> <Not bad. laughs> Is the Illuminati real? Uh, I don't know much about the Illuminati. Is Obviously. the earth flat? Mm, no. Should you ever tell a woman she's fat? Yes. Do you love white people? Yes. Did you have fun? Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking on the hot seat. I do appreciate it. Tell the folks how to get you on YouTube or whatever you have going on out there that they may keep up with you. Yeah, you can follow me at Gothics TV on YouTube and on Twitter. And I also have a documentary being made about my journey being canceled. So keep an eye out for that. Nice. Well, thank you so much for coming on. I had a good time, and it's an honor to meet you. And, and congratulations again on, your, on being engaged in the whole wedding thing. I wish you well. Hey, thank you so much. This has been a blast. Right on. And thank you folks for tuning in. I absolutely appreciate it. Don't forget to ring the bell, like, follow, tweet, subscribe. Uh, check out our merch and the store there. And don't forget, uh, the fall estate is on subscribe star. Click the link in the video description to support our show. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Have a good one.